Good morning. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming to Advanced Linear Algebra. My name is Manuel de la Rosa, and I'm going to be in charge of this group. Uh, my office is in the mathematical building, and the office is MB421. You can also contact me by email. My email, it is here. This is the address. Right. Now, as you can see from my name, and probably from my accent, I am not a native speaker. I don't speak English. The English is not my first language. But English is not your first language either, right? Some of you are from South Korea. Other people are from Malaysia. We have some Italians here. But mainly, most of you are Chinese. So our language, our first language is not English. And the, not the problem, but the thing is, our mean of communication is English. So we need to be able to understand each other. So the first week, we will have kind of a transition. In order to pass that transition, you need to feel comfortable. You need to feel confident. So the first thing is, you can ask me anything, OK? Even if it's something about my pronunciation, like, teacher, what did you say? I didn't understand this concept, or I didn't understand this word. It's fine. I'm, I'm not going to get offended. Listen, I have a lot of international experience. I was teaching in Russian before. Then I was teaching in Kazakhstan, right? I was teaching in America, in Mexico, and I was teaching in Spain, and I did my PhD in the UK. So I already know how to interact with international students. And as I said before, the first week is going to be a week of knowing each other, OK? Getting confident. Try to get confident. I know it's difficult, especially in this large classroom. We are 125. Sometimes you are shy to say, well, I'm not going to speak or ask you to repeat something. But try to do it. Why not? OK? It's time to speak up. OK, right. Now, in this module, I would like to present three things. Number one, I would like to present the module specification, OK? Then I will go to a component called teaching and learning. It's about the way I'm going to teach and my expectations for you and how you should learn, all right? Or some method for you to learn. And finally, I'm going to give you some sources. So let's start with the specification. This is advanced linear algebra. The code is MTH107. Now, you will have five credits and you need it to have linear algebra before. So this is advanced linear algebra or linear algebra two, and you already took linear algebra with the prerequisites, okay? The administrator is Gangli. So he will be in charge of all the administrative things in the model. Remember this information is in your handbook. So you have a handbook, you will have his email and everything is written there. This presentation is online. You can go online and you also can find it there. Right. We will have three lectures and one tutorial during the week. And this module, it is fascinating. You will see the power of this module. Nowadays, you can apply this module in many things, especially with this artificial intelligence, okay? Machine learning, um, data science, big data. You will need linear algebra and you will really need to understand the concepts behind linear algebra, which is the advanced linear algebra. But this module is fascinating, but at the same time, has to complex. It's challenging and demanding, very demanding. You will need to study 98 hours by yourself, OK? Try to think about that. But I'm going to be here to help you. How I'm going to help you? I'm going to help you through office hours. You can come to my office. You can come to my office. And then we have a class, for instance, on, Mon on Wednesday, and we will have a class on Friday. On Wednesday, it's going to be back to back two hours. One hour and then another class of two hours, okay? I will split it in two. I'm gonna give you a break of 10 minutes in between. Now, on Wednesday, I deliver my lecture. You go home, you reflect. If you have problems, you have Thursday to visit me, okay? And then on Friday, we'll continue. The first time is lecture and then it's a tutorial class, right? Now, if you cannot visit me at this one, I am available at this time, at this time, or at that time. 
just send me an email fast, okay? Just to make sure that I am there. Come to my office whenever you want, just pop in. But if you want to make sure that I am there, send me an email. During the office hours, you don't need to, you just come in, okay? But if it's outside of the office hours, just send me an email fast. Right, now, something important, right? Very important for you. How I'm going to assess this module? What do you have to do? Three things, final exam, midterm test, and the coursework, okay? Very important, final exam, 75%, the midterm test, 15%, and the coursework, only 10%, all right? What do I mean by coursework? Well, our coursework will have three components, two problem sheets and one mini project. Do not worry, when the time comes, I will tell you, guys, this homework is for two weeks. You need to submit it in two weeks, okay? And it will count toward your, your coursework. Guys, at the end, I think in week five, no, in week eight, probably, in week eight, I will tell you guys, these are the mini projects. You need to start working on them. And then in, in three weeks, five weeks, you need to submit. Don't worry, you will be advertised in your application, right? You have our application or on our website. I will tell you here and you will be okay. Just the thing that you need to remember is, we will have three components, final exam, midterm test, and the coursework. Coursework is not one, it's three parts in the coursework. Two formal problems and one mini project. Oh, now, the exam, it will cover all the topics, right, and learning outcomes, and it's gonna be two and, point, two and a half hours. Our midterm test is going to have two hours, and I will tell you, it depends how much we cover, right? So one, two weeks before, I will tell you, okay, our midterm test will cover until this topic. And finally, we will have a receipt. If you fail this exam, I hope not, that's why I'm here to help you. Now, unfortunately, right, it might happen that for some reason you fail. Well, don't worry, you still have a second chance. You can take a receipt exam. And this module has a receipt exam. Right, now, <clears throat> learning outcomes. At the moment, it's very abstract for you to know the learning outcomes. The thing that I want you to understand is, these learning outcomes are in your hand. In the future, I want you to go back and check the learning outcomes. The learning outcomes are the things that you should be able to do at the end of our module. So, at the moment you don't understand the terminology, but little by little, when we build the knowledge, for instance in week three, when you come back and you check your handbook or this presentation, you will read and say, huh, oh, this is a vector space. The set of all polynomials is a vector space with these operations. Ah, the set of continuous functions is a vector space. So you know how to identify now vector spaces. This is the, re the, the learning outcome, recognize vector spaces. Later, you will learn something about inner products, right? Now, can you do operations with inner products? So you will be able to solve problems using inner product spaces. One more time, very abstract at this moment, but it is there. Go and check it in the future. I will remind you later, okay? Now, something more practical for you is the syllabus, the content. Teacher, what are the topics? It's easier for me as a student to know the topics specifically. Okay, the topics are five. Vector spaces, linear subspace, linear operators, linear products and norms, spectral theory of matrices, bilinear and quadratic forms. These are going to be found in your book. You have a mandatory ebook. You already have it there. The first five chapters are these ones. Remember that your book is Linear Algebra by Friedberg. And I, will, I put two more just in case you have problems. If this book is too abstract for you, you can go to the second book, which is elementary, and have a better idea of what we are talking about, okay? Now, some of you will say, teacher, if you are going to base the lectures on the book, why do I need to come to the lectures? Well, number one, I'm not going to base my lectures on the book, okay? 
you can find well structured, well written, all the things that I'm going to say in the book. But I'm not going to say in that order, and it's not exactly those things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a different angle, a different perspective. I want you to understand something. You need to learn this material, linear algebra, from this book, from videos, from another book, or from somewhere. You have the knowledge here, linear algebra, and you are here. Now you need to get this one and get it here. Teacher, where are you? I am here, but I don't need you. I can do it directly. Well done. You don't need me, it's fine. But for some of you, it's gonna be very difficult. And some of you really need my, my help. If you need my help, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be here to facilitate the knowledge, to encourage, to tell you, oh, don't do it like that, it's very difficult. Come this way, or come that way, okay? Because if you think I'm here, and I will be vomiting all this information, no, I'm not gonna do that. During the class, I'm not gonna do that. It's boring to be just vomiting all this information. And on top of that, I don't want this class to be just a monologue, yeah? A long conversation only by me. Somehow I want to interact with you. I want you to be active. I want you to, to start active. Don't take me wrong, right? Active doesn't mean that you are moving. No. Active learners means that you need to be thinking. Even now, like, oh, what does he want? Why is he telling me this? Why is he telling me that? Now, there is a difference between active learners and passive learners, right? Now, in a big auditorium like this, we are 125, it's very easy to be passive and just receiving the information. And it is very easy to be distracted. For that reason, and another reason that I'm gonna tell you, you cannot use mobile phones or laptops in this classroom. I will repeat it. Rule. I don't have many rules. These two rules. No laptops and no mobile phones, okay? Switch it off. Now, I'm not that strict. If you receive a phone call or if you receive a text, which is important, it's important for you, right? If you are more interested, well, take it, go outside, and spend 10 minutes and then come back later. But don't do it here, okay? Don't start chatting here. You are in the class. Respect others, respect me, and respect yourself. You are in the class, be in the class. Now, some of you will say, teacher, I need my mobile phone because I take pictures. No, no pictures. Let me tell you why. Um, if you take pictures, you won't process the information. When I am talking, and there will be moments that we will need to do a lot of things and you will need to connect ideas and everything, right? You don't need to copy everything. What you need to do, you need to listen. You need to understand. Once you understand, you receive the information, you filter the information, and you write it down. That process that you will do in milliseconds, right, is fundamental to keep it in the mind. If you just take a picture, you won't, you won't remember it. Now, something very important, right? Not even remember it, probably you won't, you won't even find it in your mobile phone. Because today you take a picture of my class. Then you go outside, you have breakfast, and you take a picture of your fruit. Then you take a selfie, right? Then you go to the next lecture. Then you go to dinner. Then a, another day. And then one month later, you have 500 pictures. You don't remember where it is. You don't remember what it is because you didn't take any notes. And on top of that, yeah, on top of that, uh, you don't even find it in your mobile phone. But this is not my idea. This is research. Now, research suggests exactly what I am telling you. Everything is based in this journal, that, uh, sorry, in this article. Right? And that is not the only article. There are more articles which says that if you take notes, right, if you really make the effort, the process, it will be much better. Uh, taking notes on the laptop rather than in the long hand is increasingly common. Many researchers have suggested that laptop note-taking is less effective than long hand note-taking for learning. Now, for that reason, and um, for the distraction reason, no mobile phone and no laptop, okay? Take your notes and we will see. Now, Finally, don't look at me as I said before, as a teacher, a person who is going to give you the information now. Look at me as a facilitator, a person who is challenging, 
a person who will, who will help you, okay? You have your knowledge, that is your purpose, and this guy can help me to get my knowledge, to get my purpose, right? So I appreciate your attention. Thank you very much. I hope everything is clear. Remember, all this information is available in the website and it's available